Hi, welcome to my channel English Academic Facilitator and thanks for tuning in. If you are new, I am Sapali coaching you for another Pearson Edexcel International GCSE English Language A paper. Today as usual, I have given my sample answers for the paper having discussed the techniques you need to use in your answers. So, without further ado, let's get started. Well, this is the paper you are discussing today, that is June 2018, Morning, Paper 1, Non-Fiction Texts and Transactional Writing. Section A Reading In this section, you are given two non-fictional texts. One is an unseen text, while the other is taken from your anthology. Text 1 talks about how the writer is trying to rescue a solitary penguin and text 2 is based on the same theme that is how Helen MacDonald meets for the first time the goshawk she has adopted after her father's death. The first three questions come from the text 1 whereas text 2 gives the other two questions in the section. So let's see how the text 1 describes an unexpected meeting of the writer with a penguin. You can take a couple of minutes to skim the text. Skim up to line 30 as well. This section as well. This is the last part. You can spend one and a half hours on this section and let's see the first three questions based on text one. Question number one from lines one to four select two words or phrases that describe the harbour. So here you are supposed to select two words or phrases from the text and just copy them taking a couple of minutes. This is the given section and uh, there are many answers and you have to choose two and just copy them down. Small, sufficient only for a few score fishing boats, harbour is well defended, little protection from the westerly breeze. So you can select any. Question number two, look again at line 7 to 18. In your own words, explain what the writer thinks and feels about what he says. This question is an own word question, so you need to identify the key words and replace them with suitable synonyms. Together with the synonym chosen, change the sentence structures and answer. This carries four marks and make sure that you include four points in your answer. This is the section you need to find the answer. I've highlighted more than four points and you can choose any four. Pay attention to the keywords I highlighted in purple. I have replaced countless thousand with plethora and captivating with enjoyed, in pursuit of with chase, skillfully with strategically, surprise with to his dismay, dead penguins with corpses, covered with buried, and sickening and depressing with appalling. This is my answer and I have replaced uh, all the keywords and uh, I have used my own structures. 
The writer enjoyed watching penguins chasing fish more strategically than seagulls. However, to his dismay, there weren't many penguins to share the plethora of fish in crystal clear water. As he was advancing to see more penguins, he was utterly disheartened to witness the appalling sight of corpses of penguins buried in a thick layer of oil and tar. So this is the answer. Question number three from lines 31 to 45. Describe how and why the writer catches the bird. And here you have to support your points with brief quotations and uh, the question carries five marks. So this is the section that you need to find your answer. There are two things you need to consider in this question. One is how the writer catches the bird and the other one is why he catches the bird. So first one, uh, one reason is the writer wanted to know if the penguin's companions are alive or dead and he was pondering they must be resting and recovering and then he had an urge to rescue them if the place is cleaned. So that is the answer for why the writer catches the penguin and then you need to find uh, the answer for how he does it. Uh, then he started accumulating rubbish from the water and he distracted the penguin and dropped a piece of fishing net over its head and grabbed its feet. So that's how he does it. So let's see the answer. And this is the rest of the section that you need to find the answer. And now let's see how I answered. Uh, here I started uh, my answer uh, for the first part, that is, why the writer catches the bird. The writer wondered if the penguins might just be resting and recovering and so could have a chance to be rescued. He felt a surge of hope that he could help it. He also believed that it might be saved if it was cleaned. So that is the answer for the first part. And uh, uh, the quotations are highlighted. And afterwards, I answered the second part, that is, how he does it. So, he gathered some flotsam and jetsam from the beach to aid the capture. Being very cautious about approaching the bird like a gladiator, he distracted it with a piece of a fishing net. Having cast the net over its head, he pushed it over with a stick and then grabbed its feet, keeping his hand inside the bag. So that is how he does it. And this is the answer for the third question. Question number four is based on text two, that is from H's for Hawk, and it is taken from your anthology. So there's no need to skim the text and you can go to the question uh, straight away. Okay. Question number four, how does the writer use language and structure to interest and engage the reader? You have to remind yourself of the extract from H is for Hawk. And you need to support your answer with close reference to the extract and make sure that you include brief quotations. And as this question carries 12 marks, uh, you need to write a lengthier answer than the previous questions. Got it? The writer has utilized a number of language and structural devices such as personal pronoun, repetition, onomatopoeia, direct speech, alliteration, varied paragraphs, semantic field, italics, similes, comparatives, pathetic fallacy and metaphors. This is my answer and I have highlighted quotations in italics. At the start, the first person pronoun we is used to show the togetherness but afterwards it is shifted to the pronoun I to present the writer's own feelings and involvement with each of the hawks. Onomatopoeic word thump creates a sense of immediacy and anticipation while whirring chaotic clatter of wings gives 
a sense of nice and frenzy as the bird comes out of the box. In order to emphasize how time is stretched out during the wait, Helen uses sibilance of syrupy and slow. Apart from that, a bunch of metaphors are utilized to engage the reader. To display the confrontation of the initial meeting, a metaphor battle is used, whereas the metaphorical phrase, a great flood of sunlight drenches us, creates pathetic fallacy to suggest the positivity and the sense of unusual state of the situation. In addition, conjuring trick, a broken marionette, a fallen angel, a griffin from the pages of an illuminated bestiary are used to describe the first bird to engage the reader. In addition to the numerous metaphors, similes such as like gold falling through water and gladiator-like convey a sense of speed, weightlessness and something precious about the bird, whereas the description of the second hawk evokes fear and horror. Furthermore, some comparatives such as younger, smaller are used to highlight the differences between the hawks, while smokier and darker intensify the sinister impression of the second hawk. The verb wailed and the harsh alliteration in the phrase great awful gulfs of sound give a feeling of the second hawk's despair and misery. Writer's urgency, anxiety and panic are exposed by a number of language and structural devices. Semantic words, blank, crazy and madness connected to the second hawk evokes the writer's panic. Additionally, the use of italics and repetition for this is my hawk, this isn't my hawk, but this isn't my hawk, emphasizes Helen's feelings of disbelief and dread. Her sense of urgency and anxiety is further expressed by the use of direct speech, ellipses and rhetorical questions. And also, the last sentence leaves the reader suspense wondering whether the writer is allowed to swap the hawks and receive the one she really wants. Finally, varied paragraphs changing the pace and tone interest the reader. The long third paragraph creates slow suspense as the hawk is revealed before ending with an empathetic account of what the hawk will be able to see. And that is the end of the answer. Now we've come to the end of today's paper discussion. Hope this would help you score higher marks in your exam. And don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video. Make sure you click the bell icon for future updates. Thanks for watching and bye for now.